Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we are looking into the rust bindings for the Godot 4 engine. Therefore we will create a small project. Let's start. First we open the finder and create a new folder. Next let's open the folder in our editor of choice. In my case it's Codium. Then we will create a new Rust library. Let's call the library also Rust. You can name it however you like. Um, then following up we are changing to the cargo toml file and add the create type which will be which needs to be defined based on your operating system and of course the way how the library should be created. So for example I'm using a Mac so therefore on the Mac I can use dynamic libraries in case of iOS or the iPad, I would need a static library. So therefore, I add both types there. Next, we are adding the Godot dependency so that we have the crate or the library um, available for the use. Therefore, we are heading back to the GDX um, GitHub repository and copy and paste the URL here. In addition, we add the branch, um, which is referencing to the master. Now we can change to the librs file, the, remove the whole content and start finally initializing our new library what we want to create. In order to do that, you need to import the go.specific um, imports. I use the prelude to have the standard imports ready. Then adding a new struct, which is actually the Rust extension or library, however you like to call it. And that one will now have an unsafe implementation for the um, extension library, which is the main entry point which will be used for the whole uh, Godot implementation and referencing. It's an unsafe implementation, so therefore we need to add the unsafe and we also mark the, the macro with the Godot extension. Then following up, we can actually start implementing a new component, in that case the playrs, and we import the module in the librs folder. The playrs is just a simple um, struct for now, where we want to make a texture animating by rotating it. The base um, component is a requirement in that case, so that we have a reference to the node which will be generated um, on the Godot site later on. Therefore we ensure all the imports are met. And extend the player properly with a, a derive a Godot class and also with the following up um, class definition of the iSprite but more to that very soon. So now we added the Godot class so that it gets visible. Um, and in addition, we also declare what kind of class is the base class of our new defined struct. In that case, it's the iSprite 2D. Please note that all the relevant um, classes from Godot are referenced with i. As the next step, we start the implementation for the player component. So we will implement the initialize method and on the other hand, the physic process, which should get called by each frame um, to rotate 
the sprite at the end. As the signature in the arguments of the init function look, looks quite a bit strange for the parameter, we just can directly replace it with the base and sprite 2D as declared in line number 7. Now we need to ensure that it gets exposed to Godot, so therefore we add the macro Godot API and mark it with that one. And now let's implement the logic in order to rotate our future sprite. Therefore, we use self and base mutation because we want to change the base component um, value, in that case the rotation. Please note that you should not reference directly the base property, instead use the proper functions. In that case, for mutation, we use base underscore mute bracket. And if you just want to read values, just use base brackets. To verify our implementation, let's quickly build it. Everything went through and looks good so far. Now let's heading back to the Godot editor. And let's first Let's create a new project and select the parent folder where you want to store this project. So it should be next to the Rust folder actually. Let's hit the create folder button. Ensure the renderer is also matching your requirements. In my case I just use a, the renderer type mobile and then create it. Next let's select a scene, in that case a 2D for example scene. Um, as we're just moving a sprite and then just give it a, a proper name. In my case, I just call it main scene. And then I hit command S to save actually the new scene. And let's quickly run the example here to select also the proper setup of the default scene when running the project. Once done, um, we can go back as you see to Visual Studio or Codium and create a new file called Rust GD extension, which is actually the configuration to let Godot know about our library. So the file contains um, two properties, or well, let's say base entries, the configuration and the libraries. Libraries in that case are referring to the platform specific builds what we just did now with cargo build and therefore we need to pass in the proper uh, paths otherwise the libraries will not be visible um, and cannot be bundled during the compilation with the Godot engine when exporting your project for example. Then just add the reference to it, ensure that you have res um, colon slash slash um, in front of it because otherwise your references will not be found and every build will unfortunately not work properly. Please also note that I have a M1 uh, Mac, so that means Intel Macs of course need to refer to the X86 um, um, uh, builds instead of the ARM64. And then the compatibility minimum is set in my scenario now to 4.1. And we also need to create an entry symbol, which is the default, the GDX Rust init. You can also name it differently, but I just picked it based on the documentation as well from the GDE extension in Rust. Heading back to the Godot editor, we can double click the Rust Godot extension and see that for some reason the files or libraries are not found. Therefore, let's check our project and let's open the target folder and look into it. As you can see here, we don't have this um, dynamic libraries or static libraries created. Even when we hit cargo build, the libraries are not there. 
So most likely with our cargo configuration is something wrong. In more particular, the crate type might be missing of something. And yes, we were actually missing the brackets with the lib specification. Otherwise it's a Rust library and the C library won't recognize it. Um, after hitting that one, it seems to work finally and we have our dynamic li libraries available. When pressing again the Rust Godot extension, we also notice in the right side of the editor that there was a change in the UI and therefore that's kind of a sign that we can now reference our player. As you can see, by adding a new node, um, we are able now to add it. Let's then just add the new texture, what we want to use for the player, resize it and actually then just hit and run and see if our whole things are working. Don't forget to save, of course. And here we are. Our sprite is rotating. I hope you enjoyed the session. See you next time. Thank you.